I'm about to show you how ProRes Raw Media works with the new color management introduced in version 25.2. I do recommend, if you haven't already, update to 25.2.3 or newer because there are a couple of workflow hiccups that you can run into if you're not running the .3 or newer update to 25.2. Um, the first thing that I want to point out is under settings, there are a number of new uh, settings dealing with color management. First off, you want to make sure, uh, and I'm using the Lumetri color panel here, and I've gone through preferences to start with and just made sure that display color management is currently turned on. The next thing that I also want to double check is that my project settings, you want to be aware of this setting here called Color Manage Auto Detected Log and Raw Media. I'm going to start with this turned off so that you understand what exactly is going on with your raw media. Um, but uh, I also want to showcase this because there are some new workflows where you don't have to go through and do LUT management on a clip by clip basis if you're shooting in some sort of a RAW or a log format to make it look good for 709. Um, we might also kind of jump in a little bit into sequence settings because there's some brand new options in there, including a new wide gamut mode that you can work in if you are planning on doing any type of color grading inside of Adobe Premiere. Okay, so to start with, um, I've got the effect controls open here so that I can look at what is in my source monitor. And currently in my source monitor, with this selected, you can see that I'm currently looking at a ProRes RAW clip. I've double clicked on this, loaded it here. There it's showing that this is 709. I've got this clip on a timeline. If I select that timeline, I can see the timeline is also in the DirectRec 709 mode. And so when I look at this on the timeline, I am seeing color that looks pretty accurate for 709. So Premiere is honoring the effect, this uh, source settings effect that you expect from a ProRes RAW clip. RAW isn't decoded directly inside of Premiere. It's got, it goes through this particular effect. There is a color space setting here, and these color spaces are designed to emulate uh, other types of log footage shot on different cameras. ProRes RAW kind of predated ProRes Log. If you're working with log footage, ProRes Log footage, you don't need to go through this extra step. Premiere just recognizes it at ProRes, as ProRes Log. Now, the thing to understand is if I flip this over right now, I'm now looking at this loggy uh, look footage. So this is obviously going to require some kind of LUT management or other things to now transform it and make it look good uh, for uh, the timeline that I'm currently editing in. This is because I have color management turned off. Um, this is something where at this point, if I were to apply a, uh, a, a transform LUT on this to change it from Sony uh, S-Gamut S-Log3 into uh, 709, it would start to look correct again. You can do this in a couple of different places, and I always like to point this out. There's a lot of folks that still use this input LUT as a place to do this type of correction work when you're working with LUTs. I also just want to point out that there's also a place that this can be done in bulk under Modify Color. Um, this input LUT setting here is what we're recommending because this is kind of that beginning of the pipeline, get the transform done, and then we're starting to do additional color. It doesn't add a Lumetri effect onto every single clip, including the ones you're not going to grade. You can add LUTs here, and commonly used LUTs will show up in the list here. I still use this for ARRI. There are certain ARRI cameras that are shooting in ARRI Log 2, and having a, a LUT for that is, is kind of a nice thing. It's why it shows up in my list there. Okay, now that said, if you don't want to work with uh, LUTs anymore, LUTs are entirely optional when you're working inside of Premiere. If I turn on this color manage auto detected log and raw media, Premiere is going to recognize whatever color space it shows up in this, uh, in this effect here, and it's automatically going to apply a transform provided by the, that particular camera maker uh, so that that particular flavor of log footage is then converted back to 
uh, be correct for this particular timeline. So just by turning this on, you'll notice that this now looks correct again for 709. I've got, in this case, it is a 709 sequence. I've got uh, this particular clip has uh, been set based on the ProRes raw effect uh, to S gamut 3, S log 3. And if I right click on this clip over here, you'll notice that uh, this is actually being recognized correctly as S log 3, S gamma 3, and it's being converted uh, to match my sequence. So the new color management is all sequence based. If this is a 709 sequence, uh, it's doing that conversion to 709. Now, the reason you might want to do something like this is you can get the full benefit of your S-Log3 profile that you're using on this source clip, but it's possible now with this sequence, instead of doing your color grading in 709, you can actually flip this into what's called a wide gamut mode. Wide gamut color provides for much more flexibility and much more range where you'll fully take advantage of the uh, full log footage. You'll have all the extra detail in the highlights and the shadows. And just to quickly demonstrate this, um, I'm gonna select this clip here with the Lumetri effect. Right now, I'm just going to take the exposure slider and I'm going to move it down. This should be what you're used to seeing in Lumetri when you're working with this footage, when it's been converted, whether you've added the LUT as an input LUT or what have you. This new wide gamut pipeline really, really opens up the capability of using log. We're taking full advantage of log in a way we've never done before. So if I flip this over to wide gamut in my timeline, You'll notice as I make that same exposure adjustment, you're seeing more dynamic range than you ever have before. So I'll leave this like right about here just to show you the difference here. We'll come back here and I'll toggle this back and forth. 709 mode kind of looks a little flat there. Uh, if I put this in wide gamut mode, I'm seeing extra detail in the highlights there. So this, this whole idea of doing the color management, there is actually a benefit to it. Um, it's not uh, like getting rid of the ability to add LUTs if you want to. It's, uh, it's something to consider exploring here, playing with this wide gamut mode. If you're trying to use your old pipeline, you're like, hey, Carl, this is just too complicated. I just want to go back to the way I was doing it in 24. Keep this set to 709. Um, and when you're working with your footage um, in the effect controls for your clips, you can set this to S gamut, um, just like you did before. There's going to be one additional step that you're going to need to do if you want to use your uh, typical transform LUTs. You want to make sure and turn off this color manage auto detected log and raw media. If you do this, you can now apply the LUTs as you did before. There's one other question I seem to recall, which was, how do I change this to S gamut on multiple clips? When it used to live in that modify interpret footage setting, I could just like select a bunch of clips and I can make a change to it. Okay, there's one additional step that you're gonna wanna do here. And what that is, is you're gonna wanna right click on the name of the effect here. Um, and what I recommend doing is saving each of the settings that you typically use out as a different preset. You know, give each one a descriptive name, like this one is, you know, S gamut. I'd probably want to put the whole name in there, but you get the idea. I'm giving this a unique name here. Um, that way, when I go to my effects, you'll see that there are I've already done this for S gamut, S log three and 709 here. So I now have two presets for this source settings effect. Don't worry, you're not gonna be stacking this effect. This effect can only exist once on a clip. But now if I wanna go through and I wanna select all of these clips and apply this effect, I can very, very quickly just drag and drop. And as I do this, each of these different clips has now all been changed to S gamut. I'll double click on this one. It's also S gamut. I'll double click on this one. It's S gamut. And then if I want to change them back for some reason, um, again, I can just use like a bounding box. I can do a select all in a bin. Um, and just by dragging and dropping this, 
you can see I've just changed all of them back to 709. So you can still do a group modification. You can even bake in, if you do play with the exposure value in the raw controls, you can do that as well at the same time. But just know that the new color management, it is something that you can just disable it and that way you don't have to deal with it. But the hope is that uh, by using this new pipeline, you don't have to go back and use LUTs. LUTs are still available to you if you need, but uh, if you like the look of a particular transform LUT, by all means, feel free to keep using it. But this isn't just about making it more difficult. This is about adding new features, and hopefully you won't have to do as much LUT management in the near future. Thanks.